Hi, we're back. Now, this is the t-shirt that we're working on for my grandson. And we're going to prepare this neck piece to put on. I know a lot of people struggle with these and this is why I'm doing a video specifically on the neck piece uh, to show you how to do this. So we have already got our join here. So I would, in this size piece, fold it right sides out, okay, wrong sides together. And I'm going to, I use pins, but you can use clips if you want. I just prefer pins. I'm going to start with the uh, seam at this end and I'm folding it in half. And then I'm going to even up my edges and I've eyed roughly where that half was. So I'm going to fold it again. And I'm going to put my pins, I'm gonna pop my pin at this edge here, okay? It doesn't have to be exactly a half. A millimeter or two either way won't hurt. But I've popped my pin in halfway, okay? So I'm then going to take that pin and I'm going to put it to the seam, right? So here's the seam, I'm going to put the seam and the pin together and that gives me a measure for the quarters, all right? So I'm going to make sure my edges are together, they're not quite together, so I'm going to roughly in that area make sure the edges are together nicely. I'll pop that pin back to my line and gently pull these along and I've got my quarter measure here I'm going to put a pin into my quarter measure all right so keeping my eye roughly where it is and using my nail my pin is going in to the quarter roughly where the quarter is not exactly I'm going to do the same at the other end so let's just make sure that those edges are together. You can stretch this gently as you're doing. Don't overstretch it and overwork it. Just stretch it gently. Make sure you're getting your edges nicely together. Then measure that pin back to that center seam there. And we're back here. And I'm going to get another pin. This is my uh, chicken pin cushion. Hope you like him. I love them. You can find out easily how to do those from scraps, great scrap buster, uh, just by putting chicken pin cushion into uh, YouTube. It's brilliant. So this is my neck piece now prepared to go on. I have four measures. I have three pins and just to make it easy, I will put a pin in where this seam sits. So it's four pins. Okay. So it's in quarters. If you were doing a waistband or a cuff, you would do the same, four pins, okay? A waistband, if you're working on um, kids' clothes that are a little bit bigger or on adults' clothes, then you would put more in, you would do eight pins. And you do that by taking your quarter pins and putting them two next to each other together. And the same, making sure it's nice and even and you pop a pin in there, okay? In fact, may as well do it while we're here. So you can see. And this is marking an eighth. And then I'm going to move along to the next two quarter pins and bring them together. Bring my marker together. Make sure my edges are nicely together there. They're not quite. I just have to pull them together. Okay, just like that. They don't have to be exact. It's nice if they are, but they don't have to be. Pop that pin in there. Again, the next two wide. You always work one way around or the other. You do get mixed up. The next two quarter pins, pop them together. Okay, make sure that my... Now I'm going to open that up again and make sure that they're together because they're not together well enough. That's it. That's my edges together. Bring those two pins... To meet each other again, uh -huh. just there, and 
going to get a pin in there and there should be one more to do and that will put eight eight pins in let's bring the last two together the pins they're meeting nicely so i can put that in there okay so that's my neck piece prepared and I've shown you how to do it for on a larger, if you were, you know, doing an adults or a larger one, you you would put eight or more. And it's just the same thing. If you were doing this on an adult waistband, um, obviously you'd probably have about that gap. If you want it smaller, each time just bring the two pins together and make the halfway mark and do that evenly across. Now I'm going to do the same on here. Um, I'm going to put my join on my neck band center back so i need to find the center on here so i'm going to take it front to back i'm going to match up the armholes at the top there where the seams sit and this is my back so i'm going to take this to the back and i'm going to put a pin in same as we have there, only we don't have to match any seams up because it's just one layer of fabric. So that's my pin for my centre back. That's my centre back. Okay. I want the centre front as well, so I'm going to do the same. I'm going to match up the tops of my sleeves. Gently bring that along. This is my centre front. I'm going to put a pin into the centre front on the garment. OK, and then I'm going to do the same again as I did on the neckband. I'm going to put those two pins together. And I'm going to mark my quarter. Now you will see that the quarter is not halfway along your sleeve. OK, that's why you do this. If you were to just measure your sleeves in half as well, it wouldn't sit right. The stretch would not be even around the neckline. So the back and the front pin together and a pin in the quarter mark on the neckline. And the same on the other side, match the two, the front and the back pin. Gently match those edges along for the quarter. Okay, you can see. I'm going to get this one in. So I have four pins now in my neckline for my quarters. Okay. Now, if you remember, we went along and put more in. So we do exactly the same here. Choose which direction you're going to go in. Put the two pins next to each other. Match them up. Get the fold. Pop a pin into this fold. Okay. Take the next two along. Whoops, I need to pull that one out. Let's pop it back in. Take the next two along. Bring them together. And take it along. Gently match those edges up. Pop my pin in. Okay. Two more to do. So the next two I'm working round. I did do one last week and I ended up with uh, 10 pins in instead of eight. Not quite sure how I managed it. So that's why it's important when you've done it to check you've got the right amount of pins in. Four pins, eight pins, normally multiples of four. Okay, so this should be the last of the eight pins going in. So that's my eight pins. I'm just going to check. I have eight pins in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's it. Now I'm going to turn the uh, t-shirt back inside out. I probably should have done it inside out to start off with. There we go, inside out. And I've got the back facing you. And here's my neck piece. Now I want to match the seams. So the open seams, I've found the back seam where we joined it. With the open seams to the top. 
and the fold at the bottom. And if you were doing this patterned and you want the pattern to turn the right side up, you put the right side of the pattern to the right side of the fabric. Okay, doesn't matter here. So I've got my centre back pin and I'm putting the centre back seam in line with the centre back pin. I'm going to remove one of them, it doesn't matter which. And then the remaining pin I'm going to take out and put through all three layers. Okay. Okay. I'm going to carry on round and match my pins up. Always go one way, so I'm going to whip round and hopefully you can see what I'm doing as I match my pins up. Okay. Move it. Get it falling nice, get the edges matching nice and straight. Take one pin out, put the other pin through three layers. All the way around, keeping that neck band to the inside. One pin out, a pin through three layers. On the next one. When you have um, eight pins instead of four, it can be easier in the long run because it evens out the ease or the stretch around the neck um, a lot better. When you've been doing it a long time, you don't need to have so many in. But if you're quite new to doing this, uh, it, it's, it makes a, better, a nicer job because it, it, you know that the stretch that you're putting in there is evenly distributed around the neck. So I think we only have one more to do. Yep. Just bring those pins together and the edges together. Take one out, put the other one through all three layers. So now we're ready to sew. So we'll move over to the sewing machine. Okay, so this is my vintage sewing machine. Uh, you're probably on a new one, but it's the same as a domestic one. It just isn't quite as fancy as yours. Um, I, I can use a serger, I don't use a serger, I prefer to use my vintage sewing machines. And I have got a zigzag stitch, as I've been making this I decided the zigzag stitch was better for this fabric. So I'm using a smallish zigzag stitch on uh, this neckline. I'm going to start at the back, the way uh, my fabric is so I have the neck inside, so it's exactly how we left it. And I'm going to pop my uh, fabric and pin at the centre back seam. And I'm using the edge of my foot to guide my fabric. I'm going to tip my machine, hopefully you'll be able to see that. Okay, I don't know whether you can. There we go. So I'm using the edge of the foot as my seam guide. It only needs a narrow uh, seam on here. Now, I'm going to try and get this so you can see a little better, hopefully. It's all about the angles, you know. I'm going to remove the first pin. Now, if you look here, we have this little gaping that's happening. And so what we need to do is we need to stretch them to meet, but we need to stretch them gently. I've just noticed, there we go, everything's flat now. So first of all, I'm going to put my needle, I'm going to hold my threads and put my needle down into the fabric to start. Then I'm going to remove my first pin. Then I'm going to take this and you can see the orange neckband is shorter than the uh, body, the printed body. But we can stretch it and as it's lovely stretchy fabric, we can just stretch it. And you only need to stretch it to get those seams to sit together gently and using one finger to guide in between. And I'm going to stitch and guide and stretch at the same time. Needle in, move my fabric round a little bit and make sure that I'm just easing that those two fabrics to the same length. I'm going to stop when I get to my pin 
take my next pin out and do exactly the same. It needs a little bit of stretching. We just bring those three edges together, holding them in place, gently stretching and stitching up to the next pin and stopping before the pin. Put your needle down and so it's on the way up. It's on the rise. Make sure you don't catch your pins in your uh, cotton. Take the next pin out and gently work your way around. So I'm just lining up those three fabrics with a slight stretch so they're nice and flat on my machine bed. Off I go, up to the next pin, stop before the next pin, needle in and on the way up, pin out, turn your neckline. You need to carry on all the way around doing exactly the same. Matching up the three layers, guiding it with your fingers with a gentle stretch. Take that pin out. I'm going to whiz on round and finish this doing exactly the same. Hopefully you can see there's a little, well, it must be at the front here because the curve is just a little. There we go. There we go. Brought those together. Take that out, put that needle in. And the reason why we make sure the needle's in before you uh, go for your next section is because when you pull with the needle in, it doesn't pull um, the fabric and the stitch. It does pull the fabric, but not the stitch. And I've run out of thread. Okay, not to worry. If your thread breaks, you just stop and go back. So I'm just going to um, overlap my stitches here and uh, as I said just line up, stretch and work your way around. Nearly there. And I've overlapped my stitching so I don't need to reverse. Cut my ends off. So you can uh, just oh, let me cut those off where we had to restart. And a little bit it left behind, I believe there's a little bit there. Yeah, I don't like leaving my ends on. I have to go back and hunt for them. So we've used um, a zigzag stretch on here. As you can see, it stretches really nicely for necklines, which need to be really stretchy. And we pre-tested this before we started. So we need to go to the ironing board and press or turn this neckline strip down and as you can see on the other side this is the finish we get i do not like to top stitch but i am going to top stitch this to hold it in place okay only to give a demonstration to yourselves i wouldn't normally uh, this is for a two-year-old. He won't notice. His mum and dad will never notice. But um, for it, on older children, it, sometimes it's nicer to have it laying flat. You could use a twin needle to do this. Mine is playing up, so unfortunately I can't show you. I was going to. So I'm just going to take my zigzag off here and open that up. And without pressing it, as far as not I really should, but I'm going to do it without. I'm going to make sure my seam is lying towards the body of the garment. I'm lining, just make sure I'm starting on the back, not the front, there we go. I want to start on the center back, not the front. So I have made sure the hem is facing the garment. I'm going to stitch onto the printed I'm going to put my needle in to start and gently make sure that hem is going towards the garment and I have the curve of the neck as I'm stitching. So as I go round with my sewing machine on very close to the um, edge of the printed where the seam line is and you do this just in small bits okay so it's just 
I'm using the guide of the zigzag foot. I'll just show you on this foot. Here's a zigzag foot. You see the little hole in the middle? I'm actually using the edge of this hole as the guide for where the body joins the neckline. So I have a, a quite a close stitch for the top stitching. I'll show you when we get round it. And it does just hold it in place. It really is about personal preference, this. Because to do this, you're using a straight stitch for a start. And when you go stretching these over toddlers' heads, uh, sometimes those stitches can go ping. And that's why I don't bother to put them on. Uh, I'd rather not have them there. But it's personal preference. It looks much more professional and it does neaten that edge off. Um, and it really it's what people expect to see, I suppose. But it is personal preference. If you're not making these for sale, you're not earning money on them, there's no reason to do it. And your children or grandchildren will get used to having the seams just sat there. They don't hurt anything. We're nearly there, and I'm just going to stitch over and then I'm going to reverse, okay, to just lock that in place. Um, hopefully this week we might go and buy a tripod and you might get to see me stitching from above. All mod cons, hey? But at the moment we are how we are and I'm hoping that you understand what I'm doing. So I'm, I'll am i just turn it through. Just bear with me. I'll return this through. And then I can show you this neckline. It needs to be pressed. I'm all for pressing. So here we go. Here is the neckline with the top stitching around it. Okay, nice and neat. When I press it, these little bumpy bits will go. It will all pull itself back nice and flat. And this is the inside. Okay. So it's holding that seam down. If you have a very steady hand, you can trim this. Or you could have trimmed it before. Um, I don't have such patience. I won't trim this. But you can do. Okay. So that is doing a neckline. All it needs now is a press. Don't be afraid of them. Just go ahead and do them. They're great. Okay. So here is the pressed neckline on the garment. Okay, you can see it's sitting beautifully. a little proud here where I didn't get it together. I probably should have stitched from this side first but nobody will notice that as I've told you before really no one will notice this. So here is our neckline lovely and even all the way around and it'll stretch over those toddlers heads look stretchers just pull it out of shape a bit so we'll just pop it back but there's your neckline. 